Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is good to be with you for day 718 of our three-year journey through the Word of God. And it might help if I turn my little light on. That way you can see me, or maybe it doesn't help. Maybe it would just help if I had a black screen on there. Might be better. Anyway, <laughs> Isaiah 33 is before us this morning. Good coffee is in the cup, and let's pray and ask the Lord's help, because that's the most important thing we need as we look to his word together. Father in heaven, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us life in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word that every day blesses us in ways that we see and ways that we don't see, and we thank you for it. Please write Isaiah 33 in our hearts this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit. Please draw us closer to your son. Please show us our sin, help us to repent. Please show us our Savior and help us to believe. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 33. Ah, you destroyer, who yourself have not been destroyed. You traitor, whom none has betrayed. When you have ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. And when you have finished betraying, they will betray you. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in the time of trouble. At the tumultuous noise, peoples flee. When you lift yourself up, nations are scattered, and your spoil is gathered as the caterpillar gathers, as locusts leap. It is leapt upon. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness, and he will be the stability of your times. Abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge, the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Behold, their heroes cry in the streets. The envoys of peace weep bitterly. The highways lie waste, the traveler ceases, covenants are broken, cities are despised, there is no regard for man, the land mourns and languishes, Lebanon is confounded and withers away, Sharon is like a desert, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will arise, says the Lord, now I will lift myself up, now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff, you give birth to stubble, your breath is a, is a fire that will consume you. And the peoples will be burned as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down, they are burned in the fire. Hear, you who are far off, what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil. He will dwell on the heights. His place of defense will be the fortresses of rocks. His bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. They will see a land that stretches far. Your heart will muse on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, stammering in a tongue that you cannot understand. Behold Zion! The city of our appointed feast, your eyes will see Jerusalem, an untroubled habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But where the Lord in majesty, but there the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams. 
where no galley with oars can go, nor majestic ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. Your cords hang loose. They cannot hold the mast firm in its place or keep the sail spread out. Then prey and spoil and abundance will be divided. Even the lame will take the prey. And no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. I'll tell you what, that is such beautiful truth. Such a powerful vision that we're given of the Lord and his love for us. And it starts with really a stark reminder of how undeserving we are. You see, the real problem with human beings, with us, is that we imagine in our flesh, in our sinful nature, in our self-centered carnal nature, we imagine that we're basically good, that we deserve lots of good things from the Lord. We should really have all of our dreams fulfilled, all of our wishes granted, all of our pathways smoothed out. And we look and we see struggle and suffering and we think God's cheating us, God's holding out on us, God's not giving us what we deserve. And the truth is just completely the opposite. We are the destroyer, <laughs> the traitor. That's us. We're the destroyer who, despite the fact that we destroy what God gives us by our sin and our selfishness, we ourselves have not been destroyed. We betray God. We commit cosmic treason when we sin against the king of the universe. But God doesn't betray us. And there's this sentence of judgment coming upon Jerusalem. When you've ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. When you finish betraying, they will betray you. This is the sentence of judgment of what is coming upon, upon Jerusalem. What is coming upon Israel. However, however, they cry out to the Lord. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. The people of God are crying out to God, and they're saying, we need you. We have no hope but you. That's what we need to do. We need to look at the troubles that we face. We need to look at the things that we're experiencing, and we need to say, first of all, I deserve this because I've betrayed God by my own actions. I have destroyed and corrupted what good gifts he's given me. And yet when I'm in distress, when I'm overwhelmed by my sin or my shame or my guilt, when I'm in fear or anxiety, when I'm perplexed, when I'm stressed out, I need to look up and say, oh Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in time of trouble. Because God alone is the one who can cause all the nations to be scattered, all of the oppressors of God's people to be done away with. And the Lord is exalted. He dwells on high. He alone can and will fill Zion, that is his people, with justice and with righteousness. And he will be the stability of our times. He himself is. You see, this is another thing that like Christians misunderstand. We think that what God does in the gospel is give us good things that we need, that we get stuff from God, the forgiveness of our sins, eternal life in heaven, right? Stuff that God gives us, a mansion in glory, all that. The greatest thing God gives us in the gospel is himself. The greatest gift that we could ever receive is to be reconciled to God and to have God as our inheritance and our home. And that's why Isaiah 33 is so beautiful, because it brings that out very clearly. He will be the stability of your times. 
He will be abundance of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. And then later, when God arises, when God lifts himself up, and he judges, right? He judges the useless uh, works of his people. The All that is purged and cleansed. Then... God says, I will have a people for myself. I will have a people for myself. And who are these people? Well, verse 15 tells us who the people are that God will have for himself. Because, you know, who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with the everlasting burning? So here's, here, here's the picture. The picture is God comes, God arises, God is holy, God is just, God is righteous, God is absolutely pure and perfect in all of his ways. And he looks at the works of his people and he sees chaff and he sees selfishness and he sees betrayal and he burns up all of those works. And then the question is, how are we going to survive? We need the Lord. The Lord is our treasure. The Lord is Zion's treasure. He's, he's our righteousness. He's our justice. He's our peace. He's our wisdom. But how can we, how can we dwell with the consuming fire? Because the Lord is a consuming fire. We're told that in the New Testament, it's just not Old Testament talk. New Testament, Hebrews chapter 12, our God is a consuming fire. How can we dwell with him who is so pure and so holy? Well, we can only do so if we walk righteously, if we speak uprightly, if we despise the gain of oppressors, if we shake our hands lest they hold a bribe. In other words, I'm not going to have anything to do with taking of bribes. Stop his ears from the hearing of bloodshed. Shut his eyes from looking on evil. In other words, only the righteous can be in God's presence and can walk with God. But we're not righteous. That's our exact problem. So we need one who is righteous. You know who qualifies to walk before the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ. The perfect God-man, the Redeemer King, the Messiah, the Anointed One, representative of God's people, head of God's people, our substitute Savior, sacrifice, and righteousness. Jesus qualifies, and Jesus makes us qualified. And that's why even though we don't measure up to the standard of righteousness in verse 15, we're given this gracious gospel promise in verse 17 that your eyes will behold the king in his beauty. How? I'm a sinner. Because of a savior that we heard about yesterday who died on the cross and who paid for all of our sins, who was righteous to the end. He is qualified and he brings us along with him. And so our eyes will see the king in his beauty. And there's this, just this beautiful picture of deliverance from all the problems of this world and deliverance into the presence and the kingdom of God, the eternal glorious kingdom of God. You will see a land that stretches afar. No more do you have to deal with foreigners, people who don't understand, people who are oppressing you. And for our context, it's no more do you have to deal with unbelievers who mock you, who laugh at you and ridicule you, who don't speak the language of Zion, who don't understand God and Jesus and praise and and humility and honor and thanks. No, no more of that. Those people are gone. And then we're going to be in the Holy Zion, the New Jerusalem, the city of God's eternal praise. And, and there, verse 21, love it, verse 21, there the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams where no galley with oars can go, no majestic ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. The Lord's going to be our place. He's going to be everything for us. Abundant provision from the Lord. So much so that everybody will share in abundance forever that flows from the Lord himself, who is the abundance and the giver of all abundance. In this last line, no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. Those two things, no more sickness, no more sin. No more sorrow, no more dying, no more loss, no more regret, no more shame, no more pain. No more broken relationships, no more oppression and mockery from the world. 
no more. The Lord will be our home. He will be our place. He will be our ruler. He will be our king. He will save us forever. Aren't you longing for that day? If you belong to the Lord Jesus, you're longing for that day. And if you're not longing for that day, then you need to belong to the Lord Jesus. Because if you're too complacent in this world, last time we were in Isaiah, we talked about the women who were complacent. If you're too complacent in this world, if you're like, yeah, it's all right. I wouldn't mind staying on around here in this world for another 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 900 years. It's just fine. I mean, life is good and we are blessed in many ways and we should be thankful and God does treat us better than we deserve. But ultimately, we are longing. We should be aching to be with him. For he is our home and he's our king. And we will be at rest only when we are free from sin, free from sickness, and with him forever. Let's pray. Father, how wonderful you are. Lord Jesus, what a Savior you are to earn this for us and to give it to us as a gift. Holy Spirit, how wonderful you are to unite us to Christ and to draw us to the Father and to reconcile us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be our treasure and our joy. Be the anchor for our souls and our lives. Be the ballast in our sea through the storms. Be the wind in our sails leading us home. Be the place of our refuge and our strength and our hope. Till we are face to face with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Isaiah 33. We are going to continue on in Isaiah tomorrow. Hopefully you can join me for that. And I do hope, as always, as we're coming to the end of this year and uh, Christmas is quickly approaching, I do hope that you have a very blessed day in the Lord.